My Instapot has become my best friend. Well, welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Before we start our Instant Pot chicken dumplings, we're gonna go ahead and make our dumplings real quick. All I got is uh, about one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna take two teaspoons of baking powder teaspoons and about a half a teaspoon of salt I'm just going to mix that up now if you want to if you want to use self-rising flour use one and a half cups of self-rising flour and just omit the baking powder and the salt okay I'm going to take two tablespoons more or less of some cold butter. Now I have got an older video making my homemade chicken and dumplings the way that I've always made them. But now that the Instant Pot <laughs> has made its debut, um, it makes it a lot easier to come in when you've been all day at work and make your pot of really good chicken and dumplings. Now are they as good as the old-fashioned? Well, not too sure about that but they sure are good and easy you can put supper on the table in eight minutes making chicken and dumplings with that instant pot but on days that i've got all day to do it a lot more time than i do coming in from work believe me i boil up a big old chicken a whole chicken make all that broth and make homemade dumplings but sometimes you just need a little bit of help and that's what this instant pot is good for is to help us out just a little bit <laughs> so I'm just gonna get this butter worked into my and if I had my pastry blender in my hand right now is what I'd be using but I don't because I always forget something <laughs> that's me anymore but, you know, when you're in the kitchen cooking, you're always wandering around the kitchen trying to get all your utensils together. I don't have anybody come in and, and prep my kitchen for me and get everything ready to do these videos. So, I come in from work and I just hop to it. So, you just want to work, just like you're making biscuits, you just want to work that butter into that flour. That's one thing about this Instant Pot. Um, you know, during the week, I use my slow cooker and my Instant Pot. I hardly ever use it very much on the weekends because, you know, if, if I'm home, now there's lots of times on the weekends I'm not home much either. But, uh, and sometimes on Sundays, I might use it after church or something or that morning. It's just a really handy thing to have. So if you haven't bought your Instant Pot yet, and I know there's different brands out there. I've, I've had mine, um, I think about three years. I never had such a thing. Um, and I always had the old crock pots. But when all these new slow cookers come out in the Instant Pot, it took me a few years to, in fact, I didn't buy this one. Nope. My kids, my daughter-in-law bought this for me. 
and it sat in the box for a while because I just wasn't sure about it. But once I got it out and started using it, I just loved it. It just made such a difference in a in a working man or woman's day to come in and have something like that. And it, it just cooks things up so good. So we got our butter worked into that. And we're just going to use... I'm not going to pour it all in there. About three-fourths cup of milk. And this is going to be a drop biscuit dumpling. I do love drop biscuit or drop biscuits and drop dumplings. I love them fluffy, them fluffy dumplings. I also love the what some people call slick slickers, uh, the, where you roll them out and you cut them out. That's what I was raised on. Okay, I had to pour just a little bit more milk in there. It'll probably differ from time to time how much milk, but it'll be anywhere from three fourths cup to a cup of milk. I'm just going to stir that good, but I'm not going to overwork it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the refrigerator while I'm getting the rest of it together. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I have got my Instant Pot set on saute. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cook up. I've got two chicken breasts. This is the way I can, uh, I can save some money. Uh... If I have my own processed chicken, that's even the better. But you can find family packs of chicken breast and um, divide them up. Make you some menus that you're going to be using these chicken breasts for, whether if it's chicken and rice, chicken and dumplings, chicken and noodles, a chicken casserole. You can make that family pack of chicken breasts go a long ways. Now, when I make my homemade chicken and dumplings, I always use a whole chicken and I boil it up and uh, take the meat off the bone and use that broth to make my dumplings. But with this being an instant pot recipe, it's just a little bit different, but it tastes really good. So either way, whether if it's totally homemade or if you're doing an instant pot, it turns out really good. But for this, I'm gonna be using two chicken breasts and it's about a pound and a half of chicken breasts. And what I did is I just cut them up, I just diced them up Put me a little bit of olive oil in my and what you want to do is just cook your chicken breast just just cook them through it won't take very long and then after they have cooked to about and you know where they start getting opaque color and they're pretty much done but maybe just not completely because you will cook them the rest of the way with your other ingredients my instant pot is just with just the regular old first where they come out with instant pot that's just that's the brand name that's what it is and I know they've got different kinds now So I'm going to cook this chicken up. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on it too. I always season my meat regardless of what I'm doing with it. A little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. I'm going to let that chicken brown up just a little bit. You see how that chicken is getting cooked. It's not all the way cooked through. You still see some pink in it. Now some people would go ahead and cook this chicken all the way through and then saute their onions. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my onions in here with my meat. That's just the way that I've always cooked. Way I'm gonna do it now. So onions, let them cook along with that chicken to get that chicken cooked the rest of the way. Now, if you were using uh, boneless chicken thighs cut up, that'd be the same thing. 
Um, if you were using celery, some chopped up celery, and carrots, raw carrots, go ahead and put them in at this time too. I don't have any celery and I don't have any raw carrots. I only have canned. So I'll be putting them in just a little bit later. But uh, this would be the time to put your celery and your carrots. You'd have probably chopped up mm, about one stalk of celery chopped it up and uh, one large carrot and chopped it up and put it in here with your onions and sauteed it with your meat. So everything, the chicken gets all, you know, completely done and your vegetables are good and tender. Well, they don't really have to be that tender. Just sauteed a little bit because the Instant Pot's going to cook that pretty quick and everything will be good and tender. That's what I forget about the Instant Pot sometimes. <laughs> I think that I've got to saute everything and get it all done, but the Instant Pot does most of that for you. I'm going to turn off my saute now. This is all done. Now I'm going to put in four cups of chicken stock. And since I didn't have any celery, I'm going to be putting in a can of cream of celery, but that's just an option thing. I always keep a couple of cans of cream of celery for different casseroles and stuff that, that I make. Or you can do it homemade with your cream of something homemade mix, which I have a video on. Just stir that in like that. We're going to put in oh, just a little bit of salt. Probably half a teaspoon for me. I'm going to put in just about a half a teaspoon of pepper and about a half a teaspoon of thyme and then I'm going to put in probably just let's see I got some poultry seasoning here and I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of poultry seasoning I'm just going to give this a good stir. Now, since I didn't have any raw carrots, I'm just going to, I've got my canned carrots, and I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. And I had a little bag of frozen peas. Those are going in. I would put more if I had them. I like using the frozen peas because sometimes if you put a can of, um, canned peas in here they get kind of mushy so you have to watch that sometimes okay I took out my dumplings out of the refrigerator and I'm just gonna drop them by tablespoons or you can just paint them whichever way you want to do it now you can also do this with canned biscuits if you keep canned biscuits in the refrigerator and I do keep a couple of small cans always in there especially now that Mr. Brown's home by himself during the day and cooks himself breakfast but I haven't bought any in a while so I didn't have any but I'm just painting these about table tablespoon or a little bit bigger I think some of them I'm getting a little bit big Try not to put them on top of each other. And 
and this should make enough dumplings to kind of cover the the top of your broth you know I love making chicken dumplings in the winter time on top of the stove when I've got time to do it it's not just that I enjoy eating them I just enjoy making them too Okay, I'm going to drop this over here. So I've got my, my lid on to make sure it's on seal. Then we're going to go down here. I'm going to turn that saute back off. Um, I'm going to put it on mine. I'm going to put it on manual for eight minutes and usually with this much in it it'll take about 12 to 15 minutes for it to come up to pressure and then it'll start the countdown of eight minutes and then i'm going to let it uh, do its own um, i'm not going to vent it i'm going to let it vent itself for 10 minutes and then we'll lift the lid and make sure that everything's good and done see what we're dealing with here. I let it vent for 10 minutes on its own. I'm going to go ahead and release it the rest of the way. Mmm, smells so good in here. Let's see. What we got going on here? I'm checking the dumplings. You know, at this point, and I'm wanting to check the broth. If the broth is not thick enough for you, I'm going to turn my saute back on. Turn this off. Turn the saute back on. And I've got a fourth of a cup of water and two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm just going to pour that in there to thicken it up a little bit. But the dumplings feel good and done. If you feel like they're not done enough, you can either turn your saute back on and just let them cook like that. You see they'll start bubbling. But they feel really good to me. So I turned the saute off. I didn't have it on very long, and I'm just going to put a little bit of parsley. You don't want them to boil to death because what will happen is you're, <laughs> you won't have no dumplings left. And that's plenty thick enough for me. And the dumplings are good and done. Of course, my chicken, I'm, if you want to check it, you can. But I pretty much had it cooked through before I turned the Instapot on. So, there is our homemade chicken and dumplings in the Instant Pot. How yummy is this? And done in no time. So, here is another Instant Pot recipe. Y'all said y'all wanted more. If you don't have an Instant Pot, get you one. Try it out. Because I think you're really going to like it. <laughs>